This is CNN Breaking News. We're following breaking news on Democrats striking back against stonewalling by the Trump administration. The powerful House Ways and Means Committee chairman issuing subpoenas for six years of the president's personal and business tax returns after the Treasury Department formally denied his demand for the information. This, as the House Judiciary Committee chairman is reaching out to Attorney General William Barr, trying to get him to comply with a subpoena for the full Mueller report after the panel voted to hold him in contempt. Democrats now are considering holding a single vote by the full House on a package of contempt citations, including the one for Barr and possibly for former White House counsel Don McGahn. This hour, I'll talk with House Ways and Means Committee member Brendan Boyle, and our correspondents and analysts are also standing by. First, let's go to our congressional correspondent, Phil Mattingly, with more on the new subpoenas for the president's tax returns. Phil, will the Democrats get what they want? Wolf, with the president saying that he will fight all subpoenas, Democrats involved in this process have made clear they're in it for the long haul. Ways and Means Committee Chairman Richard Neal consulted multiple times with counsel before taking this step, a step that is a clear escalation. Now, along with subpoenas to both the IRS Department and the Treasury Department, he included a three-page letter that pushed back on several of the Trump administration's arguments bolstered by the Trump Justice Department as to why they would not comply with the request, including the idea that there was not any legislative intent behind it and that the president remained under audit. One of the things noted in Richard Neal's letter was this. Compliance is not discretionary under, circum under any circumstance, even if the taxpayer is under audit. Wolf, when you track back through this now month-long process, exchanges of letters between the Treasury Department and the Ways and Means Committee Democrats, you understand that this is likely setting up a case for court. This is both sides laying the groundwork for the fights to come in the court. The subpoena is obviously a step in that process. There is not a lot of uh, kind of consideration that they will actually get compliance with this subpoena, but it is an important step in that stage by stage process to get to court a crucial court fight to come over six years of the president's personal tax returns as well as business tax records as well. This has been a crucial uh, issue for Democrats, not just over the course of the last couple of months, but for years now. Now, this is going to be a fight that they are certainly all in on and a fight that has a number of steps to come, Wolf. Joining us now, Congressman Brendan Boyle is a Democrat. He serves on the Ways and Means Committee that's demanding the president's tax returns. Congressman, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. All right, so your committee chairman, Richard Neal, has just issued subpoenas for the president's tax returns, six years personal business tax returns. How quickly is this going to go to court? Well, unfortunately, I'm not exactly optimistic about the Trump administration um, cooperating with any of these subpoenas. And, you know, uh, the substance of this issue is important, but it's beyond the current context of this individual president and this administration. What we're really talking about is whether or not we're going to consider Congress of the United States, the first article of the Constitution, a co-equal branch of government. This unprecedented obstruction from this administration is really threatening the ability of Congress to perform an essential function of Congress, and that is oversight of the executive. Uh, so I think that, you know, when Chairman Nadler talked about this being a, a constitutional crisis that got some attention, I don't think that was uh, hyperbole the, or exaggerated rhetoric. That is how serious these issues are. The legal argument that the Treasury Secretary, Steve Mnuchin, is making in denying your committee chairman's uh, initial request. He, he says that your committee has no, quote, legitimate legislative purpose for this request. So what is, not... what is your legitimate legislative purpose and will it hold up in court? First, let's be clear. IRS Code Section 6103 does not give either the IRS commissioner or the secretary of the treasury any discretion in this matter. There simply is none. So they right now are in violation of the law and sp specifically Secretary Mnuchin is in violation of the law by not complying. That's number one. Number two, there is, as Chairman Neal uh, demonstrated in his letter released today, there is a legitimate legislative purpose. Going back decades, every president automatically, every single year, is under an automatic audit. We, as the Ways and Means Committee of the House of Representatives, have the ability, indeed the responsibility, to make sure that those audits are being performed as they should up to the law. Uh, there was already, by the way, a congressional hearing into this matter some months ago. So, A, Mnuchin doesn't have the discretion to deny this request anyway and ask for a legislative purpose. 
But even if he did, there is clearly a legislative purpose. On another uh, you know, subpoena, the uh, House Judiciary Committee, uh, the chairman, uh, Jerry Nadler, they, they voted, the Democrats voted, to hold uh, the Attorney General Bill Barr in contempt. But now uh, Nadler is offering him another chance before there's a full House vote on that subpoena to hold him in contempt, uh, uh, a full House vote. Uh, how long is this going to take? That I don't know, but I really hope that the Attorney General cooperates with this. Um, we've already had the Judiciary Committee vote finding him contempt. I would be willing to vote in the full House to also find him contempt if he didn't um, comply with the subpoena. But again, it would be in the best interest of both branches of government, uh, the executive and the legislative, if the Attorney General would follow the law, comply with his subpoena. Because again, what is at stake here is, is actually more important than the individuals that we're talking about. There is a greater principle regarding our Constitution that is at stake.